and in this particular video we're going to go ahead and set a counter to keep track of whether or not the plus symbol has been hit or the minus symbol has been hit and the number to be able to tally to, to vary based on which buttons have been set. And this is where an experienced programmer is going to come back through here and say oh yeah this is going to be easy we just basically create a variable and call it a counter because we do it so often in so many of our languages. But what I want to do is come back up here after the edit text the ET1 we're going to go ahead and create an integer and if you're not familiar with an integer is it's basically a typical number that we work with uh, and it's going to be a whole number like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or even negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 and the range is quite large here for us to work with so integer is a common number that most of us work with within programming and it usually starts off with just int that's going to be the variable type and so int is what I want it to have to work with and I'm going to call it counter and then I'm going to go ahead and put up the semicolon after it. And you can see now that everything looks okay, that I have no squiggly lines for errors. And so this is creating a number that I'm going to hold in my memory. It's going to be considered an integer, uh, int counter. And this is what we're going to use to um, work with adding and subtracting. Now I haven't set any value to it yet. I can actually set a value if I want to. I can go ahead and initialize it right now. I can actually put in equals zero and now this integer that I've created, since I don't have to link it to anything that's on the XML side of it, I can actually do it up here. I can just say int counter equals zero, meaning it's starting off as being zero. So let's go ahead and move, uh, make, move down here a little bit further, and we're going to see what happens. If it's zero when it starts, and the button one is clicked, I want it to increment. And so under my if statement here, if the button one has been clicked, what I wanted to do is I want to increment counter. And for most programmers that are out there, um, you know that simple little statement, just counter plus plus will make it automatically increment by one. And I need to end, end that with a semicolon. And what that basically says is just increment itself by one. And there are different ways of writing this code. You can say counter equals counter plus one or counter equals or counter plus equals one. A lot of different languages do it different ways, but this is usually the simplified way, um, kind of like a little shortcut or slang for increment it by one. And then you can imagine what uh, decrementing it by one would be. It's going to be counter minus minus. So if I come down here and I type in counter minus minus and then end it with a semicolon, it's going to decrease it by one rather than increment it by one. And so now we've got it set up so that whatever button is hit, that number it's going to start off with as zero is going to either increase or decrease depending on which button is there. Now that's going to be great that it works for this, but we need to actually see it work because we're going to need to see the actual total number being displayed there on my edit text field that I've got to work with. So we're going to go ahead and set that one up now as well. And so you can see the object we want to work with is called ET1. So I'm going to move down here and after the counter has incremented I want to go ahead and set it. So I'm going to come down below and I'm going to type in ET1 and then we're going to use the same thing we used in project 1. We're going to use the dot and we're going to go ahead and say set text. Let's see ET1 dot there we go set text and then in the parentheses we're going to go ahead and type in the text that I want and I'm going to type in counter here and I'm going to explain why we can't use it. And I'm going to go ahead and end that with a semicolon. Alright, it looks like it's going to work right now, but here's the problem. is Set text takes in a string. And if you have to ask yourself, what is counter? Counter is an integer or a number. It is not a string. And so different variable types are going to cause different things to happen. And it looks like it's going to work here. However, it's not going to. In fact, let's go ahead and run our application and see what happens because it's a good lesson on some troubleshooting skills. I'm going to go ahead and choose Run Project 2. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and cancel. Let me save it first. File, Save. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and hit Run Project 2. And it's going to go ahead and generate the code here and get it all loaded up. So I'll be back as soon as this loads up. All right, so Android's loaded up. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. And here's my particular application. I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus one symbol and ooh, sorry, the application tally process local.penning.matthew.tally has stopped unexpectedly. Please try again. Force the close. Alright, and I'm going to go ahead and now minimize that. 
and leave that still running because we're going to make some changes. The error I can tell you is right there. And the reason is is because we have it as an integer and not a string. In fact, if I put a string in there, let's go ahead and say I put a string in there. I'm going to put the number 1 in there. Now, if you look at that, you're going to say, well, is 1 a number or is it a string? At the moment, it's being considered a number because it doesn't have any quotes around it. So I'm going to go ahead and put double quotes around the number 1. That's another good troubleshooting problem here, is making sure that whenever you're using set text, you've got the double quotes in there. If it's going to be hard-coded in there, or, or if it's going to be a variable, make sure it's a string. So let's go ahead and see if I run it now. I'm going to go ahead and hit Run Project 2. Now let me go ahead and save it first. Choose Run. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my application. It should load up here pretty quickly. Alright, and now if I hit plus 1, you can see the number 1 has now entered in my box. But every time I keep hitting plus 1, it's not going to increment it because we hard-coded that number 1 in there. In fact, if I hit minus 1, nothing's going to happen. And so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this here again. And let's go ahead and figure out, we need to take this counter that's incrementing here by 1 and convert it to a string. So what I want to do is I'm going to come back up here to where I've declared all my variables. And I'm going to make one more variable here. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and I'm going to make it a string. Now you need to use the capital S for this particular one. We're going to go ahead and type in string. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just call it str, short for string, counter. And I'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon. And so this is just basically going to be a string that's going to represent the string value of the integer called counter. Now I need to learn how to convert that. So I'm going to come back down here to the bottom and before I actually write anything here, I'm going to go ahead and space down counter. And I'll, the reason why I want to put it after counter is because I want counter to actually run through and, and increment itself before I try to convert it. And so now let's go ahead and convert that. The variable that I just created was called str counter. And I want to set it equal to, I really want to set it equal to counter. But I need to do a little bit more than just set it equal to the name counter because it's not going to work like that. I actually have to write some code in here that actually tells it to convert it. And the code that I'm going to want to put in here is before the word int counter here, I'm going to type in integer dot, and then I'm going to go ahead and say to string, and then put counter in the parentheses. So when you're all said and done, it should look like this. And so this is going to be a method that's going to convert this integer, well you can see what it's going to do right now, to a string. And it's going to store it in the string value right there. So now if you're looking at the code and you're trying to figure out what we should be putting in here, um, hopefully some things are going off in your head and say, you know what, we should be putting in the string because we need to have a string in the set text. So I'm going to go ahead and take out those double quotes in the number one and replace it with str counter. And you can see now that this sh should work. I've taken this counter that increments by one, this number called an integer that keeps incrementing every time my button hits. After it increments, I then convert this counter to a string and then display the string here in the edit text one. So if I go ahead and run my application again, let me go ahead and choose file save. And then let's go ahead and run it. And I'm going to bring up my code and the application loads up. So now if I hit plus one, you'll see it increments by one. If I hit plus one again, hey, it keeps incrementing. So this is doing exactly what I want it to do. If I hit the minus sign, nothing's happening yet. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this one more time. And hopefully by now, if you did not see any of the code that I would be typing in here next, you could figure out what to put in there. I'm going to go ahead and finish it out for us so we can go ahead and get this to work right. I'm going to type in str counter equals, and then we're going to do the integer dot to string, and then in the parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and type in counter, and then I need to end that with a semicolon, and we we'll go ahead and hit enter, and I need to type in the et1 dot set text, and it's going to be equal to the str counter again, and make sure you end that with a semicolon, and now I think I have all my code written. So every time this button 
or every time the button one gets clicked and we check it through our method here and it's going to be v on inside of here if v is equal to b1 it's going to run this code to increment my counter to convert the counter to a string and then display the string in this edit text one if button two is selected well it's going to decrement the counter it's going to convert counter back to a string and then it's going to display the um, counter at the string counter in the edit text one that we have set up and so this is the conditional statement that runs if button one is selected this is the conditional statement that runs if button two is selected now the moment of truth let's see if it works I'll go ahead and file save run my application I'll go ahead and click on it down here and here it is your total tally is if I hit plus one it increments if I hit minus one it decrements and so this program is working as I want it and this concludes project 2 the tally project for the Android series